Okay, so hello and welcome back to another shader tutorial, shader coding tutorial actually. In this one we're going to be uh, moving on from last video where we looked at how to set up a basic shader and how to write a, a fragment shader where we basically um, leave the mesh as it is and just render the pixels, like the color for the pixels and you know add a texture and whatever. In this one we're going to be taking a mesh and basically deforming it um, through the shader and you know, first of all, we'll just do a simple, like, we can input the de uh, how it's deformed, and then we'll change it to have a time, so it's like an animated thing like this. This is just a kind of test thing to look at. But anyway, let's get into it. So we have our cube here. Now, uh, one thing I want to mention first is just how it works, basically. So, or what the code's doing. Now, um, so when we have a, I'm just using Blender as a good way, way to show you. So like with this cube we have in Unity, um, I presume that it's just a normal cube with, you know, it's got four, sorry, eight vertices. One, this corner, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the eighth one is around the back. So it has eight vertices. Now, if we go into Blender, you'll see, if we go into edit mode on this object, um, this has, I'm in ed uh, vertices select mode. So I'm in a, let me just center the actual object. Um, Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, and we've got four on the bottom. Now, what the code does is in the um, vertex function, all we're doing is basically just taking it in and passing it out. We're not we're not touching it in this. This fragment function is getting called for every pixel to color, it. whereas the vertex function is pretty. It's only getting called for the vertices. Now, a more complicated object will have more vertices, but as you can probably tell, this cube has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices, which basically means the codes are going to get ran. We're going to pass in this mesh object into Unity, and the shader is basically going to say, all right, here's the data on these vertices. Are we going to leave it the same, which is what we do, we leave it the same, or are we going to move them? So we could say, like, for all vertices above Y0, we want to move them to the left a bit or whatever, you know what I mean? So you might want to get like, you know, you might only want to move stuff that's above a certain point or whatever, you can do whatever you want, that's the best thing. But this code is gonna get ran for every vertice. So let's say we just say, okay, for each vertice, move it 10 to the like Z or X or Y, whatever. So what it'll do is it'll say, all right, here's our first vertice, we're gonna move it 10 that way. Here's the next one, 10 that way. 10 that way, 10 that way, until eventually you've moved all the vertices and your shape is back to being a cube in that place. Now I am dragging this with my hands, so it's completely inaccurate, but hey, we've got our almost cube, and that one went a bit further. You get what I'm trying to say though. If we move them all exactly 10 to the left, we've got the same object still, same shape, just move to the left. But obviously when you want to do certain deformations, you want to use like different offsets depending on maybe an input variable or, you know, the time or whatever, whatever you want. So we're going to get into doing that now. So as by default, we see here's our cube and there it is. Now we're actually going to use a sphere for this. Maybe I can do it to both, I guess. Um, what I'll do is I will uh, create a new material and call it like tutorial 02 mat. And I'll just uh, duplicate the shader, call it tutorial 2 shader open it up, get rid of the tutorial one shader, um, and we want to just rename it here. Okay, so now we've got our two shaders and our sphere, which I'm gonna add, 3D sphere. We'll put it to the same position and then we'll just uh, move this uh, in this direction, like minus one cube one there we go and uh, this shader we're going to put our new material onto on the sphere uh, so now we can do the same you know picking a texture picking a color whatever we want there is no lighting it's an unlit shader i'll cover lighting in a different shader tutorial um so what we want to do is we want to take this this mesh this object that has its vertices and we want to move them in some way with a shader so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our vertex function here where it, the, basically the vertices get calculated and we're going to take what it is now now we're passing in app data which has a vertex position and a uv coordinate so as i've explained before 
the vertex position is, as you can probably guess, the ver position of the vertices. So if we take in this here as an app, we call it where well, snap data, and its input is what we're calling it. We're calling it in. If I say in, uh, and then what should we do? We should move it. Well, we have to refer to the vertex. So vertex. So if we refer to the vertex we're passing in, and we say we want to add, um, you know, two to the z. So we'll say vertex dot z plus equals two. Every single vertice in the shape is getting moved two to the z. Oh, I was changing the tutorial oh one thing. Huh. Um, let's just uh, take that out. Go back down here. All right. So now, whoops, I'm losing my tabs. There we go. The object thing is still here, but the actual shader is rendering it. It's moved the vertices over there, and it's now rendering the pixels over there. Seems odd, but yeah. So if I click there, the, the object isn't there. It's actually still here, which might seem weird, but it's just how it's rendering it. It's a weird shader. Now, that's the basics of it. You know, you can move vertices and object. This is just moving it for every one, so the object stays the same shape. Uh, we might not want that. And let's say we want to take in a, um, let's say we want to take in a parameter to like, um, not a parameter, sorry, a property, which is basically a parameter, um, to change, I don't know, something. Um, let's say we want a variable called underscore, um, what should we call it then? Um, offset. Now, I could make it a vector free. I'm just going to say it's a, well, I think I could, so if I call it, you know, offset, I think there's a type called float free. Yeah. Um, float free and its default is, um, well, zero, zero, zero. Now, assuming that I wrote that right, if I go into the inspector, no, I didn't. Where's the tutorial? Okay, what I'll do is um, I will maybe just take in a float actually. Because if we're just taking uh, one float thing, uh, then that will be fine. Let's do that. We'll just take in a float, which is a capital, if I remember correctly. There we go. So we get a float here. Now there's already offset there, there's no offset here. Oh. Oh, when you do a float, it is already. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize it was default that anyway. That's fine. Um, I'll just do that to make it a little better. So this is offset. Um, I'll just put vertex offset. So if you remember, this is what we see in the inspector. This is the type. This is the default value. And this is the variable name. So if we want to refer to it down here, so it's a float down here. So we'll just say, um, see, it's technically a uh, float four. So um, if we say, uh, In, uh, sorry, capital in dot uh, vertex plus equals vertex offset. There we go. We can now move it through the shader where it's getting rendered. Don't need W for this. Um, yeah, we can basically render where it's getting. Uh, so change where it's getting rendered. If we look here, the object is still here, but we're changing its thing here, which is, you know, quite handy. You might want to do that. Now, generally, you won't want to bother doing that manually through the input here, but, you know, it's just something pretty cool to show that you can do. You can take in an input like that and then move your object. Now, you know, before this video gets on too long, I've already covered the basics. You can probably just mess around whatever you want now. We're going to make it kind of animated, which is obviously a bit cooler. So if I go to uh, 
Okay, get rid of the vertex offset thing. Let's take in some parameters. So let's just get rid of this. We want to take in a, all right, so we'll say, um, animation speed uh, equals um, animation speed equals no, I don't want to say the equal am I doing that's why I'm just being confused just call it you know animation speed and it's type float though actually the thing is it's a um, it's a float but it's only a float one uh, I don't know how it's going to read that. I think I can just refer to the x value of the float. Um, what I'll do is I'll put... Um, no, sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, range. And then we can just say, like, um, what we'll do on our range to be, we'll say um, 0, comma, um, what should we use for the maximum value? We'll say 5. 3. I think 5 might be too much. Um... So we'll leave that. I uh, just set it equal to default value. Um, then we want to say, you know, um, how intense the animation because it's going to be using a curve. We want to say like how. Um, so if you know what a sine curve looks like, you know it's just a up down up down up down up down. Uh, this next value will be like how up and down it goes. How big are the offsets? So I'll just call it you know um, offset size uh, offset size. It's a range again between 0 and 10. I don't know, it depends how extreme we want it to be. Um, and we'll say uh, we can just leave that, I think, actually. Let's leave that how it is. Um, okay, if we go down here then. Vertex function. So before it, here we have to take in our things. So we're taking in what two floats? We're taking in um. Okay. So the date. If we actually go out here, you'll see they're actually just sliders now. Oh. Uh -oh. Uh, what have I done wrong here? So. Uh -huh. There's nothing wrong there. I don't think. Is it because I've put semicolons? Is it not like that? Ah, that was why. <laughs> Silly me. So now we've got sliders here. Yay, between our values that we've put in as max and min. So, let's use them. Um, shader code. Alright, so we want to say down here somewhere. I've, I've got lost again. Um, Alright, here we are. Float um, animation speed and then float offset size like that, which is declaring them down here. And then we are going to use them. So, what do we want to do? Well, we want to take a particular, um, let, let's say we've got our object like a sphere, right? Let's say we want it to go wavy like I showed you earlier, so that like it kind of goes like that, you know, kind of like across, 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 across as it's going down. So what we want to do is we off we have one, sorry, we want to offset it on the X. We want the X, which is left and right, we want those to move. But we want them to move depending on their Y position, if you get what I'm saying. So we still want them to move left and right, so we want to change the X, but the X is going to depend on the Y. So depending on how high or low it is, we'll change the left and right. So if we go into the vertex function and we say um, in dot vertex dot x, so referring to the x vertex, we're going to say we'll take add, then sin is sine, you know the sine, you know sine cos tan, um, and it basically just takes in a value and it's going to output the value. So as we go between um, well zero and one, it's going to you'll see, you'll see. So if we say underscore time dot y that's just the time value that is changing that's just increasing we're gonna multiply it by our animation 
speed. And then we're going to be relying on our, um, the, basically the offset size is going to be depending on, you know, how, like how basically how far it goes out. So we're going to say, um, in, yeah, dot vertex dot y, this is what it's depending on. Uh, and we're going to multiply that by offset size. So now basically this is going to be depending on our sliders on how much it does it. Now let's have a look. Oh, let's obviously fix our problem first. It's got a problem because I did an end line. Okay. So on our shader now, please work. Oh. Okay. This is interesting. It's doing stuff. Um, what kind of values have I used? Uh, let me just tweak the values a bit. Huh, this is interesting. I feel like, oh, the reason why it's happening is probably because the Unity default... Um, yeah, the Unity default sphere doesn't have enough faces. You know what? I'll really quickly save the day. Um, let's just get rid of this stupid sphere. I think because it only has a few vertices on it. It's basically not good enough. See, if I place it to this... Um, apply it to the... Oh, no, sorry. It might be because I'm not in play mode. Sometimes when you're in... Yeah. Now, actually, that's, that's pretty cool on the cube, <laughs> to be honest. It's pretty weird, but it's pretty cool. Um, if I go back to the scene view now, you'll see it's offsetting on a curve, but the problem is because there's only two kind of layers of vertices on the Y, it's only going to move like that. Now, let me actually... Sorry, go back and put in the uh, sphere and press play. It's going to be all funky, isn't it? Okay, it's working just very weirdly, but it looks pretty cool actually. So as you see on this, now actually I don't need to change it, I don't need to go to Blender, it's working. Uh, the values are just a bit strange. Um, so that's the speed, right? So if I increase that, it's going to go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Then I just want to lower the amount. So if you see here, it's just going to be moving the object. And then the more I increase this, the more bendy it's going to get, the offset size. So you can make it look like that. Or like less messed up. So here's your slightly deformed shape, depending on you know. <laughs> it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Um. Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll advance onto this. On this, sorry, I'll advance in in on this whatever in our next video. I'll go into more detailed things. I'll also add lighting so you can see the shape a bit better. But yeah, um, let's just also put this onto the cube. Why not? We'll have some dancing shapes. So there we go. <laughs> There is the video, I guess. Um, that's a simple introduction to moving vertices and obviously animating them, taking in some more parameter types, just slowly building up your knowledge of the shader code to build some simple but cool shaders um, to mess around. Then we'll, we'll end up moving on to more meaningful shaders and you know cooler ones. But now that you have access and a function to your vertices, you can do whatever you want with them. You know, you can just put them wherever you want, I guess, uh, depending on different things. You know, just go. Use your imagination, see what you can make. You know, feel free to send me the creations you've made if you made anything interesting. Um, you know, show them off. Uh, if you want to have any feedback on anything or, you know, give feedback or whatever, then obviously there's a comment section. And I'd also recommend joining our Discord server where we have discussions about things Unity related, JavaScript, C Sharp, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, it's just a good place to be. Um, and also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate, you know, like, subscribe, it would mean a lot if you want to see more of these videos. Uh, obviously commenting what you'd like me to cover more of. Uh, I think I might make quite a few more of these shader videos, because they're actually really fun to make compared to my other videos. Not, not that I dislike the other ones, but these are pretty fun to make. And it's also cool to see the outcomes of these videos, <laughs> just like this. But anyway, I think I've said everything. Let's get this video uploaded before midnight. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.